Meet the Candidate series. The ARC of Pennsylvania hosted an interview of Kyle Donahue, candidate for Lackawanna County's 113th House District, by Roseanne Polition, parent. The Meet the Candidate series is an opportunity for individuals with intellectual and developmental disabilities and their families to hear from candidates on disability issues. Candidates from all parties have been invited to participate. The ARC of Pennsylvania is a nonpartisan organization and does not endorse political candidates. Good morning, everyone, and thank you for joining us here today for our Meet the Candidate series. The ARC of Pennsylvania's Meet the Candidate series is an opportunity for individuals with intellectual and developmental disabilities and their families to learn how candidates who are running for open seats um, have policy on disability issues. So we're really grateful today to have Kyle Donahue. Kyle is a Democrat candidate running for the PA House 113th District of Lackawanna County. He is running to replace retiring representative Tom Welby. A member of Scranton City Council, Kyle has worked to revitalize the city of Scranton to make it a place that future generations can thrive and prosper. Some of his key issues are fair funding education, the living wage, affordable health care, and campaign finance reform. Kyle, thank you so much for joining us here today. And Thank with us, we have the local chapter um, in the Lackawanna area. We have the ARC of Northeastern PA. And with us, we have Mary Claire Kretsch, their executive director. So Mary Claire, do you want to give a few words? I would love to. Thank you so much, Katie. Good morning, Kyle. And thank you for this opportunity to, uh, to meet with you and to share our concerns, our goals uh, here at the ARC of NEPA. As Katie mentioned, uh, we serve a large area in Northeastern Pennsylvania. We provide supports and services to children and adults with intellectual and developmental disabilities. Primarily located in Lackawanna County, you're probably familiar with our work. We do residential services, adult day, and as Katie mentioned, particularly advocacy supports. What does advocacy do? Uh, we help families and individuals obtain education and community supports that they desperately need. We are really a steward of the Pennsylvania government in meeting the needs of a most vulnerable population. Uh, what's our biggest concern? Probably something you hear on a daily basis. Today, as Roseanne can attest, uh, we get calls from families, individuals, unable to obtain services for their loved one uh, because of staffing. Providers just are unable at this point to consider expanding services to meet the needs of growing waiting lists and families are becoming desperate, desperately in need of those supports. And how can you help as a legislator? You can help us and other providers across the Commonwealth by helping us with rates of reimbursement that provide a living wage for our direct support staff. It's critical to us, Kyle, and, you know, as an advocacy organization, the needs of the individuals we serve and their families is all, it's what we are all about. Uh, with that, uh, Kyle, do you have any questions for me? Uh, no, not at the moment. The ARC is currently 67 years old. We began with a group of parents just seeking special education for their children. And I'm proud to tell you that those parents formed the ARC and were able to open one of the first special ed classes. With that, I'll, I'll ask Roseanne to begin her questions. Hello. Uh, our first question today is, how will you advocate for people with intellectual and developmental disabilities and their families who are on the waiting list for community services? Uh, so I'd just like to first start off with, first off, thank you for uh, having me today. Um, <clears throat> uh, I've always been aware of the ARC. Um, I actually grew up about a block away uh, on the 200 block of Stafford Avenue from where the ARC is on Meadow Ave. Um, but I, until you know, I started looking into these questions that were sent. I really didn't know some, you know, deep, do a deep dive into the challenges um, that, that are faced by those with intellectual uh, disabilities and learning disabilities. Um, but, you know, I, I, and the first one 
that surprised me was this waiting list um, that has just been exam exacerbated by the uh, COVID pandemic, it seems. Um, so in terms of, I, I know I do, I, I was looking at that, uh, the PA waiting list campaign uh, website just for some information and it was staggering uh, how bad of a situation that is in Pennsylvania. Um, so in terms of, you know, I really didn't <clears throat> have a policy position on that, but in, just in terms of reading the ARC's uh, position statements uh, on this issues, uh, we have to rely on those that deal uh, in this in this realm every day on how to move forward. Um, I can't pretend to sit here and you know talk you know talk at you about what what needs to be done here because I think it's more of you you letting us know as legislators the challenges you're facing and also you know some solutions maybe to some of these issues. So you know I'm not. Like I said, I'm not completely in tuned with all of them, but I would like to rely on on the art as advocates in terms of educating myself on some of these issues uh, that this community faces. Great, thank you. Uh, question number two, what investments to expand long-term services and supports in the community for people with intellectual and developmental disabilities will you advocate for? So I think it, it needs it needs to go into uh, having those community based uh, programs available, um, you know, especially you know something like a job training uh, to to make make this community feel like they are a part of society because they are and could contribute uh, to society. So it's it's making sure that they have the resources uh, available, not only the services but then also the resources to be uh, productive members of society. Thank you. Question number three, will you support the closure of Pennsylvania's four remaining state centers? So this was one thing that I, you know, that when, especially when researching this, I didn't really have a grasp on, because usually when you say, you know, government run programs are usually more efficient than private run programs, but that's not the case here. And I, and it, it like a lot, the light bulb went off in my head when you're talking about, you know, moving more into community-based uh, programs instead of, you know, the old school way of, you know, the institutional-based uh, programs. Uh, so I believe looking into that, that two of them are supposed to close. It, it's been delayed a little bit, but two of them are supposed to close, I believe, at the end of November um, with two of them still open. But I would be in support of, of closing those and moving more towards a community base. I just think we just have to put uh, some, you know, to make sure that you get it right so that you're, you're, when you're transferring, uh, you know, these people out of this, out of these centers that, that they're not regressing or, you know, they're put into situations where, you know, they feel comfortable. Great. Thank you. Question four, how will you work to address the shortage of direct service professionals? So I, I you know, I, I don't think this is only just in the direct, but it's in really jobs overall i think first off we need to uh give the guarantee a living wage um for all workers um no one's you know gonna go to a job where they end up losing money at, at the end of the day and i think you know sometimes you get into those situations i think i was seeing where the average uh uh direct support professional makes around 11 11 50 an hour um i believe so so i think that needs to be raised and I also think that a part of the worker shortage just in society overall, um, especially for younger people um, my age is the lack of uh, access to affordable childcare. Um, a lot of times, you know, one parent might have to stay home because going to work is actually losing them money. Um, so, so it's not only wages, it's guaranteeing benefits, it's, you know, paid family leave, um, medical leave, um, but but also you know providing access to uh, quality childcare for all the VA residents. Great, thank you. Um, question five: What actions will you take to assist in reducing the risk of crimes committed against people with intellectual and developmental disabilities? So I think first it's 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 getting rid of that stigma. I think that 
you know, people in society might have uh, towards those with disabilities. Um, but also it's, it's, so this is a tough work. So it's, I feel like society just overall, um, I don't know if we're just getting meaner or if there's more ability to see the meanness uh, that some people have. Um, but I think it's just trying to create that welcoming environment overall. Um, I just, just think overall we need to be better towards each other. Thank you. Question six, how will you work to ensure the education system in Pennsylvania meets the needs of all children, especially those with intellectual developmental disability? So one of the main issues I was, um, before I was on city council, I was actually a school director in the city of Scranton. Um, so this is their funding for our public schools um, is really what drove me to uh, run for state representative. Um, because someone's education shouldn't be dictated by their zip code. Um, but we also, but that also goes towards, uh, you know, special education funding too. Um, because special education funding was set up basically the same way, and it's been reformed the same way that regular ed funding is, is that only new dollars are, are covered under a fair funding formula, whereas old dollars are not. So someone in, you know, the York School District might be getting more resources than someone in the Scranton School District, where I believe that, you know, just across the board in Pennsylvania, everyone should have a fair, fair and equal opportunity. Great, thank you. And the last question, number seven, what ways will you promote meaningful employment opportunities in your district for individuals with intellectual and developmental disability? So I, I think first, first off it's, uh, you know, I think, you need to get, you need to push past the stigma I brought up before, but also it's providing, you know, those with intellectual and learning disabilities, you know, the job training they need. Um, we know that they, they, they could be productive, you know, members of society. They just need to be given that opportunity. And I think it's, we need to advocate for creating that opportunity. Great, thank you very much. The Meet the Candidate series is an opportunity for individuals with intellectual and developmental disabilities and their families to hear from candidates on disability issues. Candidates from all parties have been invited to participate. The ARC of Pennsylvania is a nonpartisan organization and does not endorse political candidates.